Friends, please join with me in the Pride Litany this morning, a leader and people response. LGBTQ plus people and their allies have existed throughout history. Even when we were invisible to the larger society, our values and contributions have made our world a better place. Today, we celebrate the values that have made us strong as individuals and a community. In every culture, we have been prophets, seers, poets, and visionaries. From our unique advantage point in life, we offer our world a new perspective. We thank, thank you, God, that you, that you have, have given, given us new eyes to see. Give, give us strength, strength to boldly proclaim the, the truth. In the face of persecution, bigotry, and hatred, we have shown a resiliency of faith and a passion for life. We know what it is like to stare our fear in the eye. We thank, we thank you, God, God, for all of those who have gone before us, whose courageous stands make it possible for us to celebrate today. As wounded healers, we have discovered a depth of compassion that is rooted in our pain and strengthened by our love. We are often the ones who care for the sick, the marginalized, and the weak. We thank you, God, that, that your compassion has touched us, that we might offer this gift to our world. We press the boundaries of the status quo. We create the avant-garde, the ingenuous, the fresh. We question why things are the way they are and then work to make them new and different. We, we thank, thank you, God, God that, that you have, have called, called us to join, join you in making, making all things new. From every walk of life, from every strata of the world, from every class and nation and race, the queer community crosses all categories of society. We indeed are the rainbow of the world. We, we thank, thank you, God, that, that you have given us the gift of diversity, diversity and, and helped, helped us learn the true, true gifts, gifts of, of inclusivity. We are a deeply spiritual people. Our faith undergirds everything that we are and everything that we do. God has chosen us to minister healing and wholeness in our time and for all time. We, we thank, thank you, God, for, for calling us to, to a, a deeper, deeper journey. journey. May, May all who come behind us find us faithful, faithful to this calling. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture lesson is from the fourth chapter of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Hear these words. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as sovereign and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, Light will shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be clear and this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For who are the living are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Would you join me in a moment of prayer as we ask God to be present in the Word and in our understanding. Let us pray. Beloved and Holy One, we give you thanks this day for being with us. We thank you for your presence that lives within our bodies and calls us into the world. We thank you for sharing with us as we come into this sacred space, this place of worship. So as we have sung, prayed, allowed your spirit to be made flesh in each and every one of us, now still our hearts, open our minds, let the God that we believe in still speak to us this day. And so now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay. Mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are gathering again this Sunday following the festivities of Pentecost. Last week, we celebrated and reminded ourselves of that great Spirit of God that came upon those disciples that day as they gathered in that upper room, that Holy Spirit that compelled them to leave that upper room and to go into Jerusalem, into the world, to share good news. We spoke about the ways in which those early followers of Jesus were compelled to leave that room, and we understand that perhaps they never, ever returned to that room again. But it was from that room that the gospel of Jesus began to be heard in the various languages throughout Jerusalem and the Judean land. As they began to experience this God that they had worshipped, this Jesus that they had journeyed with for all those years. The culmination of the story came at Pentecost, which we often call the birthday of the church. It was that same spirit that was with those disciples, that was with God at the very beginning and has been throughout all of creation. 
But we spoke last Sunday about the need, perhaps for those early believers, to have a fresh wind, a new wind. I think I called it a second wind that would move those disciples to compel them into the world, fulfilling what Jesus would say at the end of Matthew's gospel, that we're called to go into all of the world and to preach good news. It was that compelling spirit that we called upon as Cathedral of Hope, inviting us to feel that second wind for ourselves, that new wind, that breath of God that would sweep among us, compelling us to know that this good news is not just for those early believers, but is for us as well. And that that radical, inclusive, generous, abundant God is a God who comes among us each and every day that we open ourselves to the Spirit of grace. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is, is to change us, to move us, to compel us. And it was something inside of those disciples that could no longer be contained within their bodies as they went out into Jerusalem, compelled by that Spirit, something inside that was so strong. It is that same spirit that we call upon ourselves as we step into pride season and understanding that the spirit of a living God falls afresh on each and every one of us and that that something that is inside of us cannot remain silent. But just as Jesus invited those early disciples to come out of their upper room, so we are invited to come out this day, how appropriate on Pride Sunday to come out into the world, to come out as we are. You know, as Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we have so much to be grateful for, so much to be grateful for the ways in which those upon which we stand, those shoulders upon those who came before us, founded such an incredible place. It was an amazing journey yesterday as we were at Fair Park at the festival, Fifty-three years later, as Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, in the very beginning of those 40 years, we were the only game in town. But you could not walk around that festival yesterday more than five or ten feet without finding another community of faith that was stepping on our territory. (laughs) Seriously, folks. How incredible it is that we saw United Methodist churches that have just gone through their own battles around LGBTQ plus inclusion, now out and loud and bold at Fair Park yesterday. And not just United Methodists, but Unitarian Universalists, people of many faiths and no faith, but all wanting to speak out and to say that there is another voice, another encounter of this spirit, a second wind, a fresh wind, something inside so strong that is moving the church universal to find that ruach, that breath of God, fresh and alive. And dare I say, from this chancel this morning, that if it had not been for Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ as pioneers of that journey, that the church would still be stuck in its first wind rather than its second wind. Congratulations, Cathedral of Hope. Today we think about that something inside that is so strong. For many, many years, as we have welcomed LGBT people among us and through us and with us, as I say, Cathedral of Hope is founded in and rooted beyond just the LGBTQ community. But how incredible it was as we began to gather and to think about God's radical, inclusive love that would include every single one of us. And on that journey, so many have said to me, well, you know, I've come to the point now where I know that God loves me just the way that I am. And I say, well, thank you, Jesus. But I always ask this question, what's next? You see, it's it's easy to accept that God loves me just the way that I am. It gives me perfect license to do so many different things. 
But the real necessary experience of God is to ask ourselves that question, what is next? What is God calling us to? I believe we have some glimpses and some answers in our sacred text. Today we read from the second letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. And if ever you have read those letters, letters one and letters two, you will see that there is a big contrast between the two letters. The first letter is Paul chastening, if you will, those early followers for the ways in which they were not embracing the values of this one they said they were following. Over and over again, we hear Paul calling them to a new way of life, acknowledging that we are all one in Christ Jesus. And for those early followers, those early believers, there was still some lording over one another. And Paul says over and over again, that's not the way we do business, I'm paraphrasing. The ways in which we do business is that we understand that the lowly and the rich are one together, and we are called into that relationship one with the other to bring up the weak and the disenfranchised. And to find ways in which we might find that common place together. By the time we get to Paul's second letter, we understand that the church must have listened. For Paul then encourages them to understand that whilst we understand and whilst we know that we are all one in Christ Jesus, there is something about our personal journeys, our personal spirituality, which calls us to a deeper faith and a deeper understanding. That this faith that we have is like being held in clay jars. And it's something inside. It's something within each and every one of us. For those of us who have accepted God's love for us just the way that we are, we take that next step and we call ourselves, just as we call all people of faith, to a deeper understanding of what our purpose is in life. And our purpose in accordance with what we understand in our faithful journey is to be Christ-like in all our ways, to find that strength within us, to find that power. Even though we sometimes may be perplexed, even though sometimes we might feel persecuted, even though sometimes we might feel crushed down, but the Apostle Paul reminds us that even in those circumstances, there is something inside so strong that calls us to greater living, to a greater understanding of what it means to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And as we have said over and over in this congregation, we are better together. We are stronger together for that something that is so strong inside of each and every one of us is something that we get to live out loud. Isn't that why we're on the pride parade route this day? To show that there is something inside so strong that we as queer people, LGBTQ+, TS, SGL, all the letters of the alphabet, <laughs> God's rainbow people, that we're not just ordinary anymore, but we have a super God that lives inside and that we cannot allow just to sit inside of us, but must come out must be present in the world. That's what's next, is to live boldly in the world so that the world might know that we are Christians by what? By our love. You know, you may question that going to Fair Park this day. Well, there were many who called themselves Christians who were at Fair Park yesterday who were saying anything but love. And many of us heard things yesterday that perhaps have been triggers for us, questioning ourselves again, does God really love me? Well, I declare this morning, God not only thinks you are fabulous, but thinks you are fabulous. <laughs> and if I could get a fourth snap in there, I would. But God calls us beyond just our experiences of our identities to one identity as people of Jesus. How incredible that God would call the remnant such as us to be God's ambassadors in this world. 
And I know that as we march on that pride parade route this day, among other churches and communities of faith, we will be speaking a language in tongues that some will hear and understand. And they will get that Pentecost experience that we did last Sunday. That's our job. And those who will speak against us, those who use the name of Jesus in that way, are using it in a way not designed by the one we call God. Maybe pushed down, maybe perplexed, maybe feeling abandoned, but God is with us. And as our sacred text says, if God is with us, who can be against us? Today we declare that as Pride Sunday, we declare that y'all means all, every single one of us. And that we must be those people in the world to express that love for all. As I was leaving the festival yesterday, some of you know that I had Sophia with me, my little eight-year-old going on 30. (laughs) And as we were leaving the festival yesterday and headed towards the car, we noticed that there were some little tracks on people's cars. You can imagine what those tracks said. Repent now, forever go to hell. And those tracks were placed on every person's car. And Sophia turned to me and she said, Dada, why are they leaving this message on your car? Don't they understand that God loves everyone? I'm going to tell you, out of the mouths of children and babes, amen? And so we began a little journey for about 30 minutes going round to all of the cars and taking those tracks off (laughs) of those cars. The best is yet to come, friends. As we began taking those tracks off the car, we caught up with the person who was putting them on the cars. <laughs> and so he wanted to know why I was taking the tracks off the cars, and I decided not to engage in dialogue. And so as he was putting them on the car, Sophia was running behind and taking them <laughs> off the car. And he said to me, he said, don't you believe in free speech? I said, I do believe in free speech. I just don't happen to believe in hate speech. Last week, Reverend Andrea asked if we could wear rainbow stoles for this particular service. Those of you who are around Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ for many years know that we only use the traditional stoles that match the parapets. It's a gay thing, you know. (laughs) And so she asked if we could wear stoles, and so I said, absolutely. And so this morning, I took down my big Tupperware box in my office, uh, put it on Scott Stout's chair because he's not here in actual working today. He's just in worship today. (laughs) And so I placed it down, and I started hunting through because I wanted to find this stole. This stole was created for me when I was first ordained as a minister in my first parish in Bournemouth, England. And a man who was a member of that church at the time, Ian Willis, had invited members of the church to send him yarn. It didn't matter what color, because he wanted to create this stole for me. And so I dug in my box to find this stole, and as I started to put it on this morning, I remembered that there was an inscription on the inside of this stone. And it says, presented to Reverend Neil Thomas on the occasion of his ordination, 1990. (laughs) There's a reason why we put a ramp up onto the chancel, you know. (laughs) And then I did perhaps the most unforgivable thing. 
I turned to Reverend Dr. Andrew and asked her the question that you should never ask anybody. How old are you? <laughs> she said, I'm 35. And I realized that she was two when I was ordained to the Christian ministry. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <laughs> For 30 three years, preaching God's radical, inclusive love in England, in the United States, and because of what we get to do together around the world. May we invite that fresh wind, that ruach of God, that presence of the holy, not just to a place where we accept that God loves us just the way that we are, but always, always seeking out for ourselves what's next. May it be so as it was for those early disciples. May it be for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given in the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit. Be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.